the people who were jailed after the Southport riots, a lot of which happened as a result of the belief that the miscreant in question, who stabbed three young girls to death after consulting a copy of the training manual entitled Military Studies in the Jihad Against the Tyrants of Al-Qaeda, the most notorious Islamic terrorist organisation ever known, the belief that he was a Muslim, those people were almost certainly advised to plead guilty in order to get the shortest possible sentence. So they did, but they didn't. However, this fella here, he pleaded not guilty. Man cleared of racial hatred over Southport posts. A man has been acquitted of stirring up racial hatred in a series of social media posts shared before and after the Southport killings. Mark Heath pleaded not guilty and had a jury trial. This is a list of the things in the article which he said, as in posted on social media. 1, 2 and 4 I've had to improvise a little bit around because they don't quote him exactly. Number 3 is an exact quote, and the fifth one is what he said what, when he was defending himself. He's an asylum seeker called Ali al Shikat. He's 17. He arrived on a dinghy and people heard him shouting Allahu Akbar. He was on a plane to Rwanda that got stopped by Keir Starmer and the other loony lefties. Those people now have blood on their hands as they kept a dangerous killer in Britain. This is a tipping point. We need to take our country back. The bits I highlighted are what might be considered questionable. The first two are just incorrect. That wasn't his name. He wasn't an immigrant. He was born here, for better or for worse, and he wasn't on any Rwanda plane stopped by Starmer and Kogas, there weren't any. He was a dangerous killer, but that wasn't down to Starmer, and a tipping point means things are going to get worse now. He was accused of stirring up racial hatred, not inciting violence, which was the charge which quite a lot of them faced and going to trial meant that he was able to put up a robust defence. I do have strong opinions and express those opinions, but at no point was I trying to stir up racial hatred. I am very much right-wing. I do not hate all Muslims, but I do have major issues with radical Islam. When asked by his barrister if he was intending to stir up racial hatred on that post, he added, not at all. I was just commenting on what I had heard. Taking our country back means taking the borders back. That's me having an opinion. If he'd pleaded guilty, he'd have been given a long, non suspended sentence in line with all the others. He was pushing what was then considered to be fake about him being a Muslim, and what he said about his name and his illegal immigrant status, they definitely were false. And that eagerness to jump on the Muslim line could be argued as uh, a anti-Muslim state of mind. He defended the charge of racial hatred and he got off. I am very much right-wing. I do not hate all Muslims, but I do have major issues with radical Islam. Taking our country back means taking the borders back. That's me having an opinion. The charge of racial hatred for posting things on social media out of line with the establishment groupthink is not the same as violent disorder. But this is what Peter Lynch said out loud as opposed to simply posting on social media. I'm not going to read the words out loud because they might upset YouTube sensibilities, but there isn't a whole lot there that in any sane world would be considered particularly chastisement worthy. Saying all that and walking up to the police in their riot gear and getting assaulted by them as it turned out got him a three-year custodial sentence which turned out to be a death sentence. If Peter Lynch, rather than pleading guilty, had defended his comments by explaining exactly what he meant, and possibly crucially to a jury, as Mark Heath had, rather than pleading guilty, could it be the case that the outcome might have been different? This is now what Lucy Connolly said, to get a three-year custodial sentence for distributing material with the intention of stirring up racial hatred, not stirring up as with Mark Heath, but with the intention of stirring up racial hatred. That is, the full scurrilous paragraph, and the key 15 words are Set fire to all the effing hotels full of the bastards for all I care. She could have mounted a defence, and it could have been a good defence. The statement she made is not a command, it's not an order. For all I care, at the end, makes it a statement of permission with you can, at the beginning, missed off for online brevity. It's an abbreviation of you can set fire to the hotels for all I care, which is a statement of permission rather than a command. Saying you may do this bad thing if you want to is not as toxic as saying do this bad thing. It simply isn't. Words matter. That could have been up for consideration and it almost certainly wasn't considered. There is clearly a defence to be made there, but pleading guilty knocks it on the head. 
But now we know that pleading not guilty and mounting a robust defence can work. If those two people had pleaded not guilty and defended themselves, might it be the case that both would now be out rather than one being in and the other one being dead? So maybe in the future, when these charges are brought again, and they definitely will be brought again, people should think about not pleading guilty and defending themselves.